Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to explore why some vaccines last a really long time and some only last months or years, and what vaccines adults need. This topic has certainly received a lot of press lately as we continue to see ongoing recommendations about COVID vaccine boosters. We're receiving mixed messages from all sorts of organizations about who and when Americans should get a booster shot for COVID. I no longer think anyone believes that at some point they won't need a booster shot. It's just a question of when that will occur and if it will be the exact same shot you received the first time or if it will be tweaked in some way. But the question I've been fielding lately is why do some vaccines need boosters and others don't? And what are the recommendations for vaccine boosters for adults these days? I find patients are so confused about what they need, and in the hurriedness of today's medical visits, vaccines can easily get overlooked. So besides the COVID vaccine, the additional four vaccines that all adults need to consider getting are influenza, Tdap, shingles, and Pneumovax. That's it. If you know when you need to get these, you're all set. So let's delve into each one of these more carefully, bearing in mind that recommendations will vary based on each person. So be sure to talk with your doctor about these recommendations. Let me start by saying the effectiveness of any vaccine depends on the amount of the immune response a vaccine creates, how fast the resulting antibodies decline, and whether the virus or bacteria tend to mutate and how quickly those mutations occur. Let's start with the influenza vaccine. This vaccine is recommended every year, and the reason is because this respiratory virus is an RNA virus, like SARS-CoV-2, and it changes and mutates rapidly. And it's also recommended more frequently because the antibody levels after infection or vaccination decline fairly quickly. The research for what strains to include in the vaccine occurs all year long, as 142 national influenza centers in 113 different countries collect data on the flu viruses impacting the world's population. Scientists then meet in February to identify any new flu strains and to choose which strains they think will be the most likely to spread illness in the upcoming flu season. Sometimes the flu shot matches and fights the influenza virus really well, and other years not so much. Some strains or variants remain in the vaccine for several years, while others may only be used once. Protection with the influenza vaccine is thought to last for about six months. For the 2021-2022 flu season, all available influenza vaccines are now quadrivalent and contain two influenza A and two influenza B strains. And remember that you can receive your influenza vaccine at the same time as your COVID vaccine. The best time to get your flu shot is in October because you want the full six month protection to last to the end of the season, which typically is in March. Next up is the Tdap or tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis vaccine. The Tdap is actually three vaccines in one shot and it fights three different bacteria. This vaccine is recommended to all adolescents and then needs to be repeated every 10 years during adulthood. The reason why this does not need to be repeated more frequently is that these bacteria do not mutate quickly and the antibodies last at a level that's strong enough to combat illness for about 10 years. Tetanus is also known as lockjaw and can occur after deep penetrating wounds that are dirty. In America, we think of the risk when stepping on a rusty nail. The diphtheria bacteria creates a toxin that can kill tissue in the respiratory system and coats the nose and throat, making it difficult to breathe. And lastly, pertussis is best known as whooping cough, and that can be really harmful to babies and young children. The shingles vaccine is another important vaccine for anyone age 50 and older. Think of this as the chicken pox vaccine booster for adults. The vaccine fights the virus called varicella and is a DNA virus that tends to be more stable and less prone to mutations than the RNA viruses like influenza and SARS-CoV-2. So kids get vaccinated against chickenpox twice, the last time between the ages of four and six, and because the immunity is felt to last until adulthood, 
The booster is not needed until the age of 50 or older. Y'all may have heard about a newer shingles vaccine that came out in 2017, and this is true. It's replacing the prior one. The new one is called Shingrix and is a two-shot series given four to six months apart. This is to prevent a terrible and painful rash called shingles or herpes zoster that's caused by the varicella virus or the virus that causes chickenpox. Once you've been vaccinated or have had an infection with chickenpox, that pesky varicella virus embeds itself and lays dormant in our nerve cells. Then with time, our lessening immunity allows the varicella virus to reactivate itself. Only this time you don't get chickenpox, you get shingles. Even if you've had shingles in the past, it's still recommended that you get the Shingrix vaccine. I recommend waiting one year after a shingles episode because the natural immunity is thought to last at least that long. And if you've had the older shingles vaccine, which was a one-shot vaccine called Zostavax, it's still recommended that you get the Shingrix vaccine because it works a lot better. And finally, the pneumonia vaccine. This vaccine is known as Pneumavax or the pneumococcal 23 vaccine and is recommended for anyone age 65 or older or anyone less than 65 with diabetes, asthma, or COPD. Once again, think of this as a type of booster of the pneumonia vaccine that you may have received in childhood. This vaccine works against the bacteria called pneumococcus that causes pneumonia. There are more than 90 different types of pneumococcus bacteria. Kids today receive several doses of the pneumonia vaccine against the 13 most common forms of pneumococcus bacteria and are usually fully vaccinated by the age of two. Adults then receive the Pneumovax vaccine, which covers 11 additional forms of the pneumococcal bacteria. But what's interesting is that studies have not shown that getting the pneumonia vaccine will prevent pneumonia, but studies have shown that getting the pneumonia vaccine will help prevent the most common complications arising from pneumonia, including infection in the blood and infection in the brain that can have terrible consequences from pneumococcal pneumonia. So in the end, the big five vaccines to consider are against COVID, influenza, Tdap, shingles, and pneumonia. That's it. And of course, these recommendations are for healthy adults. The recommendations change with any chronic conditions and all recommendations and vaccine decisions should be made with your own doctor. Thanks for joining me.